All right, and we are back with another episode of Steel's Global Perspective. We are talking linebackers, fat or fit. If you missed our show on D linemen, fat or fit, we are going through the measurements and we're saying, are they fat in terms of they don't fit in terms of athletic measurements or they don't fit what the Steel is going to do? Or we're saying fit, they fit what we want to do or they fit the, the athletic ability. Can we make them fit on the field? All right, we're going to get to linebackers now. This list is it's not a um, direct list for me versus a lot of the, the lists that we had for the D linemen. So um, you'll have to bear with me a little bit, Shannon, as I as I go through it. But I'm going to give you the first one. And it was a couple of D linemen we didn't cover that I would love to cover, but, um, you know, we, we, we had to keep it capped. Um, but Jeremiah Trotter is a big name that a lot of people are talking about in this draft process. I was worried about height and weight. I feel like I had good reason to be. Six foot, 228, 31 and a half inch arms, nine and one quarter inch hands. I I think a lot of Trotter, the mystique is due to the bloodlines. Yeah. And I, I watched him this year because I like Clemson. Yeah. And I watched him because... The Steelers, I said, they're going to need, you know, they need their next young stud in the middle. Yep. And last year, I thought there was some good guys coming out. Uh, there was a lot of great free agents. This year, it's not. It's not a good uh, in free agency or in the draft, in my opinion. So, um, I'm not as worried about the height for the middle linebacker. Um, but that weight is concerning to me. Uh, I'm sure he's lighter trying to run better. Yeah, totally. He's probably five. But, but he'll might, probably, probably only five or six pounds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He might be 235, uh, which is, you know, uh, if you got the motor and you got that intensity, you know, but I, really we need to see how he runs and how he tests. Um, I'm not as high on Trotter as, like, say, Big G and some of my other colleagues. Yeah. Um, I think he's a possibility, but he's not my favorite uh, for them uh, at this point. Uh, so, you know, for me, I, I, I don't want to say he's fat, but I'll say he's in the middle. <laughs> uh, he's cost himself half a round, I think, on measurables. Let's flip it over to Peyton Wilson, the much-wanted uh, yeah. Peyton Wilson. There's a guy I like. You know this. <laughs> Six foot four. Oh, yes, yes. 233. Yeah, yeah. 30 and a half inch arms, nine inch hands. Did you say 30 and a half? Yeah. Okay, so he, he don't have good reach. Uh, but the reason I like him, it really, you know, I, I knew he was going to be over 6'3". Yep. Uh, and he can easily carry 240. Yep. The, the, with his build, he's lanky. But... I, again, now we're getting into tangibles, and I'm an intangibles mm. guy. Uh, mm. I like the work ethic. I like the intensity. He interviewed yesterday, and he was intense in his interview. You could tell his love of football. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to say something, and I ain't compared him to this guy, but I remember Ray Lewis's interview. Yeah, actually. And, and Ray Lewis, he – it just oozed out of him ever poor of his being that how much he loved football and yeah. how much he wanted to be a, a professional football player. And I'm sorry, but I get that for Peyton Wilson. Um, to me, he's a huge fit for the Steelers. I love it. Um, I love that take. Uh, you know, I'm one Steelers fan that doesn't, Hate Ray Lewis. Um, you know, I you know what I'm like. I've said this to you before about some couple of quarterbacks. Like, there's some players out there that we love to hate them because they played on a different team. But oh, some of those players, if they, were still, if they were exactly. still, they were still like, oh my god. But it is a salary cap era, and it is everything is fair in this world. And some, well, not everything's fair, but things have a way of working themselves out. And I don't think if we'd got Ray, we probably wouldn't have ended up with Troy, and I'd rather Troy than Ray. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that's how it is. Well, um, put it this way: here's uh, real quick. I always no, I like it. It's good. It helps me. I always categorize greatness 
by how much I couldn't stand them, but how much I respected them on the field. I yeah, did, I couldn't stand Ray Lewis. I couldn't stand Ed Reed. I couldn't stand Terrell Suggs. But I respected the heck out of them. Because Ray Lewis was one of the most dominant inside linebackers I ever saw. Mm. So that, that I have that much respect for his game, you know, that tells you how much I respect him. As a player. So, oh, totally. Um, so there's another guy, and I know the Steelers don't need an edge rus- rusher. But what did you think of Wilson? I didn't really get your answer. Um... So I got really into Wilson. Remember, we were talking about him a couple of weeks back and I was really like advocating for Wilson. I think I'm a little bit worried about the injuries, i got to say. Well, that was these first two years. The last two years have been better. I know. But I still think, and I'm trying to pull up his numbers. To me, the best linebacker in his class because Cooper under under tested as well on um under measured. Well, you don't have to tell me who you like the best. I just Wilson. Just I like it. I, I, I he's number three. He's number three for me. But you see the motor. Oh, I love them. I love what I see yeah, on tape. I watched. Yeah. I watched when I uh, my plane trips the other week. I watched half an hour of of paper. I love it. Right. And I think he's got Chad the Moomer. length. I think he's Chad Moomer on steroids. He's got but, the length. He can cover sideline. The sideline. I mean. That's what I'm talking I, about, yeah. I I just – yeah, in, in this draft, the Steelers need a linebacker that's best uh, – not best ability is going to be their availability, but it needs to be up there. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. No, no, I know. Yeah, so there's this guy, Austin Booker, right? And I just want to talk about because I think this is an interesting guy to watch as well. Two years in college, right? Played six games – Six games, right, in, in, in 2022. 12 last year. He's played 41 games in total. I think he had eight snaps or something in his first year. He's had 13 tackles for a loss. <clears throat> He's had eight sacks and two forced fumbles. But the guy's barely played. The guy's measured in at six foot four and a half, 240 pound, arm length of 33 and seven, eight inch. Hand size of nine and one quarter, and everyone's like, he's going to obliterate the testing. It's just, what do you think? I just, I don't want, because this is a name that someone, I don't, I don't even know if the Steelers going to draft him because he's going to go earlier than where the Steelers would be smart to go and double down on edge. But like, in terms of edge outside linebacker Russia. But like, what do you, I just want to get, as from all your experience, Shannon, how do you evaluate a guy like this that's barely played? Being productive, eight sacks and thirteen tackles for a loss is nothing to, you know, mm-hmm. to laugh at. But just there's not a lot of production there. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you can get a guy like that in a later round, uh, you know, you might be getting a diamond in the rough. Uh, that's that's where your scouting department really makes their money, because mm-hmm. you've got to do a deep dive on these guys' uh, personality. Uh, intensity, uh, chemistry within the locker room. Uh, a lot of times there's reasons why. Uh, it could even be scholastic. I mean, they're, you know, maybe the grades has been an issue. And, and you know, because coaches are like, you know, if you don't give me what I want here, then you're not going to get the playing time on the field. You know, there's a lot of different things. Um, True. I keep hearing about him. I didn't hear nothing until two days ago. <laughs> and then people was talking about he's going to test off the charts. And and then he's got the... Well, they're all listening to they're all listening to Lance Zerline because he did a podcast with yeah. Rocky Brooks. And there might have been one I heard it. But he said yeah. that he was a, um, one of these uh, combine darlings, you know, or whatever term he used that was going to stand out. And it sounds like he's going to. Uh, and the measurements... The measurables are a good fit. Um, and the Steelers are always, you know, in every draft you can say, well, Steelers will probably get a edge and a wide receiver. That's Well, that was under Colbert, but we'll see moving forward. But edge is so important for the Steelers. And 
And then are we for sure that they're going to leave Nick Herbig at edge? Or, you know, will they maybe eventually decide to try to put him in off ball? So if that was the case, a guy like this would make sense. Yeah, 100%. Now, Cooper. Let's get to Cooper. And I am having trouble bringing up his um, measurements. But I did see him weigh in and measure. I saw him measure at... um, I'm trying to pull it up while we're talking. Cooper. I saw him measure in, Shannon, at 6'2". At 6'2". And I want to get... Come on. I think he measured in at only 230. Okay. Trying to pull up his arm length. Because I think they had him listed what it, in the what program, what, 6'4"? Yeah. I yeah, thought they I had him listed in like 6'4". Four. Yeah, and like 240. Yeah. Because they was talking yeah. about, you know, he was – uh, uh, you know, a, even an edge. And then, you know, once all this process started, everybody's talking about him being off ball. And he's very athletic. Uh, so we'll have to see what he runs and jumps. Yeah, I I think that worries me a little bit. I think that worries me a little bit. Um, I'm trying to, as I said, I'm trying to pull it up to get the full get the full mix because I think it's important but if to they give move the him to, assessment. But if, if they move him to off ball, that's basically a, a position change, uh, which I think could, you know, cause a little bit of a, a delay of him being ready to participate and contribute this year. Hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I think it, it can be a huge problem for them. I think it's affected his draft stock. Um, I, think, I think it's a it's 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 probably that, that, that could cost him at least a round. I think that, that, that that's no that's no more first. Well, he was basically, and a lot of the stuff I was saying, he was considered, you know, the the first linebacker off the board. I don't mm-hmm. know if you could say that now. Ah, so I got Junior Colson. I got six foot two. Six foot two. I'm happy about this. 238 pounds at the combine, right? Now he played more at like 248, 246. Yeah. Arm length of 32 and a half, hand size nine and three eighths. Mate, this is the linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Draft him. Yeah, there, there's nothing there uh, uh, of concern at all. Uh, you know, that that that's all within the measurables that the Steelers would like. Uh, and then when you consider his on-field production, um, yeah, I think that uh, uh, he's definitely a strong consideration in the third round. Oh, I got Cooper's numbers. Six foot two, 230 pounds, arm length of 34. So you'll like that hand yeah. size of nine and three quarter inch. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, like and I said, then- he... Uh, I, coming out of college, I thought he was an edge. And then they started talking about he was going to be off ball. Uh, and like I said, I just think that there's going to be a transition there trying to do that at the NFL level. So we'll get to our final two or three prospects, and then we will be – yeah, we'll probably do three, and then we'll, when we'll wrap this one up. And then we'll have another global perspective for you guys out there on the testing, early testing from D-Lineman. I'm going to motor through these guys super quick, but uh, let's go with the next guy I want to talk about. Let's do Tommy Eichenberg out of Big G's of the Ohio State. Yeah. Six foot two, 233 pounds. That's probably what I expect. I think he'd play about 240. Arm length of 31 and 5 8 inch, hand size nine and a quarter. Um, about what I was expecting. Uh, the arm lifts a little short uh, than I was hoping for. Uh, I think he's a a good consolation prize, say in the fourth round. 
Oh, you know what I'd I mean? Even you... Late for like early fifth. Like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think you could get a guy that could eventually be a Josie Jewell type starter. Mm. You know, he he's going to be. Uh, if you have a real athletic guy next to him in a three four, and and he could be that uh, that just fundamentally sound tackling machine, I think that he he would be a good fit. Um. But like right now, they've got a Landon Roberts. You know, you couldn't put them two together. It, it, it would not be a good match at all. Uh, I like his football IQ, uh, and the sum is greater than the 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 sum of the parts is greater than the that what you uh, than what you think with a, a guy like him. Um, but he was born two decades too late. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, I think he'd have been a star. But now he's going to be limited of how effective he'll be able to be. So um, I, I don't think he those measurements are going to change his draft uh, yeah. evaluations at all. I think he's probably, as you said, projected fourth or fifth round. Did you hear me? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I had projected. I had projected. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, the next guy and our second last linebacker that we're going to talk about is Jalen Ford out of Texas. Six foot two, 240 pounds, a little bit heavier than what I thought he'd come in at. He came in 31 and three quarter inch arm length as well, and a hand size of nine and a half. Thoughts. We're getting a lot of these shorter armed guys. Uh, he's a better athlete uh, than Agabar, but I, I just um, I don't think he's he's a great fit for the Steelers. Already got some guys that's gonna they need a little more length there. Yeah, I mean, I, I like him. I think he's huge value in the fourth round, production wise. So I like that. He's not necessarily tested out of, or he's not measured when being weighed out of the out of the gym kind of thing like this in super perfection. Because I do have a fourth round grade in him. I think he's gonna. I think he's a better prospect than Eichenberg. That's just my opinion. Obviously, I watch a lot more Longhorns than I do Ohio State. Yeah. Um, but I was hoping for a little bit better arm length. And then we're gonna wrap it up with a guy out of North Carolina, Cedric Gray. Who I was gonna ask I about like, him. Yeah. I like, I, I can't work out, I, 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 I'll have to decide between now and the draft, but I can't work out exactly where I'm putting him in the pecking order. Six, one and a half, 234 pound, mm -hmm. 32 and a half inch arms, hand size of nine flat. Yeah. I, I, did you see his interview? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, um, he just, one of them guys, it seems like that, um, He's a stiller. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe just where he's a fan of the Stillers. But, um, you know, he said such respect for the the organization. And um, I was impressed uh, by his interview. And it seems like the Stillers really showed some interest. Uh, even having scouts there at some of their games. Mm. Uh, so, um Another guy that I think would definitely fill a need. And to me, he's better value than Ford would be in that fourth round range. I think he'll go higher. I think he'll go in the third. Oh, you think you're going to third? Yeah, I think he'll go in the third. Yeah, I think someone will draft him in the third. When they, if there's a run on linebackers and guys like Colson end up in the second, um, well, I, I think he could be a third round pick. Yeah, it, it depends on who goes in the second. Yeah. yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. These guys have got a test as well. This is just measurables. This is just our fat or fat or fit <laughs> segment. <laughs> um, but that's going to wrap up this show of Steelers Global Perspective. I'm Matty P with Shannon White. As always, go steal.